Hello Anthony again. Well, some of you remember from the last time I was here we showed you our inside camera. I'm here today to show you our outside version of the camera which we call an X-Term. Obviously it's IP65 so it can accept the punishment of uh, rain and uh, harsh uh, freezing conditions. Um, inside this box can be a number of applications but before we go into that I would like to show you how easy it is to set up. So you've just taken delivery of your uh, new outside camera. There are two Allen screws at the bottom which we just undo and this will allow you access to everything you need to, uh, to use to get the, the camera to work. Here is the power button, here is the SD card and here is the battery connector. There are three important elements of this. So all I have to do is to turn the power button to on and we'll see that there's an LED light now which will throw uh, several sequences including one that turns it to green. This will tell me that it's now formatted the SD card and is actually taking pictures. So now it's gone green. If I want to arm the camera for it to take pictures, as before we use the remote control, we press the red button to arm the camera. This is now taking pictures but it doesn't know what time and date it is. So what we're going to do, we're going to disarm the camera again using the remote control. Now we're going to depress the black button and you'll see that there's a rapid flashing from that LED light. When it goes back into a regular heartbeat it is now safe to turn the camera off. Take the SD card out. Put the SD card inside the USB reader which comes with the camera and then just insert it into your machine. As you can see a red light appears to notify you that it's working. You'll also notice that because they're unencrypted JPEGs you can see you can view the images in this format but for the purpose of this demonstration I wanted to show you in the VidiLand software so this is a software that comes free with the camera if we go into the image viewer and click continue locate images my computer removable disk and then there's now a DCIM folder now which will actually show you the pictures I've just taken but as you can see from the watermark, there's a date and time which is a default. So we're just going to change that now. And we do that by going into configuration, continue, my computer, removable disk. I had a 50 50 chance, and you get it wrong. Settings file. Now this is the settings file which has now picked up the date and time from this. So I'm just going to write in here watermark demo for info and I'll save that. Now what's going to happen is that I'm going to remove this SD card and I'm going to insert the SD card back into the camera and I'm going to turn the power on again. You'll notice that the LED light will once again start its sequence to load up that new settings file and it's told you it's ready by the green light. So if you now depress the red button you can see that this camera is now ready to install. I'll just do up these Allen screws which will keep the integrity of the IP65 and if we just turn out the lights for me you'll see that the infrared capability of the light will now take over and you'll be able to see that this creates light in zero light environment. So we just wait for that to happen. And you can see the, the LED lights mm -hmm. as they come on. They're creating light just before it takes a photograph. Did you see that? Yep. So when you put this uh, camera into pipes or in no light environments, um, you'll get this fantastic image still being created. So if we then show you those pictures, turn the light on, so I've now just turned the black button to uh, disarm the camera, we then undo the two Allen screws, and once again, turn the power off, and we take the SD card out, the SD card back into the SD card reader, 
once again we can go into image viewer continue locate images my computer removable disk and you can see now there's now a second file which these images will be watermarked with the correct date and time demo for info for security now if we just flash through those you'll see that even in dark you have the IR light creating suitable lighting conditions mm -hmm. for pictures to be taken okay well that's the first part I want to show you the second part relates to the configuration of the product inside the camera we can decide how long this unit's going to last for by simply deciding what battery we're going to use we can decide what IR light source we're going to use because we can change the board from visible to invisible IR so you won't even see the IR burning we can have it with solar panels integrated inside the box or indeed external solar panels and there's a number of ways that we can install this product in the field very quickly we can screw this bracket which comes with the product to a wall simply with the one screw returned here and two screws returned to the wall alternatively if we wanted to have a bit more of an angle we could use this angle bracket mounted in the same way and suddenly we have the angle that we need mounted on a wall or we can use the plastic ties to rapidly deploy this on a branch of a tree or in the ground or on a nail so there are many ways that we can install this quickly if we just go over to this bench we can see the type of products that this becomes modular now the battery that I'm using is this 7.5 amp hour battery which can last up to four and a half months but as you can see as we go up the range 12.5 amp hours 26 amp hours and beyond we've got an incredibly long life battery in addition to which we can plug in a solar panel board to the camera for example here we have the ability to simply plug in a solar panel so that now will recharge the battery in addition to that if we wanted to send those pictures via GPRS we could plug in a GPRS modem if we wanted to add facilities to the camera we could plug in a multi-purpose board this multi-purpose board then allows the camera to accept relays in triggers out and different powers it also controls a siren and strobe so it is actually now an alarm panel in addition to that we can decide what triggers the camera at the moment it's the PIR on the board but if we disable this and we put in a WASC kit which is a WASP board, this board here what will happen it will allow us to trigger the camera from a another device up to a 100 meters away so if this device was powered and was 100 meters away from the camera that trigger would then be received by this transceiver and this would then trigger the camera to take the picture because we have that advancement we now have a range of telephoto lenses so we have 6mm, 8mm, 16mm we've even got now 25mm telephoto lens capability in addition to all of this we have designed this board here which is our power board and allows us to infinitely power the camera through solar panel through wind turbines or any other even hardwired devices so hopefully you'll find this of interest to you and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.